It's a new year, new start, and it's already going pretty well for me. Arsenal are top of the Premier League, I have a super cool internship with NBC, and I still get to co-host the best show on LaSalle TV. Just please don't remind me that this is my last ever semester of Sportsline co-host, please. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Megan Cooney. I know I'm no Libby Gilliland, but she is off living her best life in Florida, so I'm going to have to do for now. In the meantime, you're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explore Athletics, Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We know you missed us and you definitely missed our recaps. Don't fret, we have plenty to catch you up on from winter break. And later, we know you have thoughts and your own opinions and you know we would love to hear them. We have an analysis of winter sports so far coming up. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline Top 3. One, men's basketball guard Jameer Brickus was named the Philadelphia Big Five Player of the Week for the week of January 15th. This achievement comes after Brickus matched his career high point total against UMass, scoring 25 and dropping 12 points against Fordham. Brickus has scored in the double digits in five straight games and in eight of his last nine games. Number two, track and field's Liam Rivard was named as the Atlantic 10 Track Performer of the Week after a standout performance in the Penn 10 Team Select. His first place finish in the 800 meter was good enough to put him first in the Atlantic 10, fourth all time for LaSalle, and 19th in the country. Number three, men's swimming and diving's Felix Jedbrat was named Novacare Student Athlete of the Week this week, following a great performance at the Fordham Dual Meet. Jedbrat secured first place in both the 100 and 200 yard freestyle events. So it's always great to start the semester off with some individual uh, awards for LaSalle, especially for Jameer Brickus in men's basketball. He's been having a really great uh, kind of December, January stretch. So to see that he was able to match his career high and also just get that recognition from the Big Five, which is always great since it's such a competitive kind of basketball city. Just really great to see Jameer Brickus get, get that recognition. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's really starting to shine out there. Mm -hmm. He's really starting to come into his own. You know, he's ranked seventh in the A-10 for like three-pointers, and it's just absolutely amazing to see him just evolve against UMass, against Penn, scoring 25 points in a game. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, because, you know, basketball, we, we're in some competitive conferences, and especially with the Big Five and the Atlantic 10, there's just, there is a lot of, of competition. And Jameer Brickus is not a name that we have said too many times in the past, even though he, he's been here for a few years. So the fact that he's definitely coming into his own is good. And then for track and field, Liam Rivard getting Atlantic 10 Player of the Week after... Uh, a really record, not breaking performance, but he's first in the A-10, he's fourth all-time on LaSalle, so he's on that leaderboard. And then to be in the top 20 in the entire country is just amazing for him. Yeah, absolutely. And moving on to swimming and diving, yeah. Felix Jedbrat, he is a name that we've been hearing a lot lately. Mm -hmm. We'll hear it more this week coming up in some recaps, and I just think he's really kind of taken over lately. And for him to be NovaCare Athlete of the Week is just fantastic. Yeah, because NovaCare Student Athlete of the Week definitely had some stiff competition. You know, we had Ola V.C. Adams, we had Liam Rivard, which are also names that we are going to be talking about in recaps. So the fact that swimming and diving got some recognition is really amazing as well. Uh, and it's just great to see that even though we don't have a ton of different sports to talk about in the winter time, the ones that we do have to talk about are, are getting some really good uh, recognition in terms of individual and team performances. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it for the top three. Now let's see how our teams did in this week's recaps. Nothing warms you up in these cold weather months like a good run, and boy did LaSalle's track and field team run over winter break. Their first outing was at the Penn 10 Team Select on January 15th. 
For the women, El Mancini took first in the 3,000 meters, clocking in at 9 minutes and 32.20 seconds. Maeve Gimbert also placed in the top 15, securing 14th place with a time of 10 minutes and 41.10 seconds. Maya Primus earned a top 20 spot in the 400 meters, while Georgia Rose Dawson placed sixth in the 800 meters. Rounding out the track runners, Liz Mancini took third in the mile with a time of 4 minutes and 47.63 seconds, while Christine Mancini placed sixth with a time of 4 minutes and 50.80 seconds. In the field, Ola B.C. Adams placed first in the long jump with her best mark of 5.78 meters. Casey Brown placed fourth with 5.22 meters. For the men, Liam Rivard finished first in the 800 meters, claiming a time of 1 minute and 51.6 seconds. Dylan Service also finished in the top 10, taking ninth place with 1 minute and 55.45 seconds. Rounding out the solid performance was McCallum Rowe, who took the top spot in the mile with a time of 4 minutes and 14.14 seconds. It was then off to the Villanova Invitational, where Ola B.C. Adams claimed another gold medal in the long jump with a distance of 5.73 meters. Casey Brown also finished in the top 10, taking ninth with a distance of 10.77 meters. On the track, Georgia Rose Dawson finished 15th in the 1,000 meter, while Ella Varello, Jenna Webb, and Casey McLeese all cracked the top 20 in the 3,000 meters. To finish off, Jericho Lufrano made the top 10 in the 400 meters. For the men, Liam Rivard earned another gold medal, finishing the 400 meters with a time of 48.87 seconds. Finn Verney finished top 10 in the 1,000 meters, while Dylan Service just missed out by taking 11th place. In the 3,000 meters, Ibrahim Kadir took the bronze medal with a time of 8 minutes and 10.74 seconds. Tayanga Mbombo also finished in the top 10, finishing 8th with a time of 8 minutes and 29.41 seconds. Finishing off for the men was Charlie Hazlitt, who got first in the 800 meters with a time of 1 minute and 56.61 seconds. Swim and Dive has been extremely busy with three meets over the past few weeks. The first meet of the new year was at Princeton. The women took fourth place Four first place finishes, but it wasn't enough to take a win overall, falling 180 to 110. On the men's side, Felix Jedbrat took the only first place finish as they fell 231 to 65. This week, they returned to the pool in a dual meet against Fordham and Richmond. Annie Moser took a win in the 1,000 yard freestyle on the women's side, while Phoebe Shea took third in the one and three meter dives. They fell to Fordham 188 to 111 and to Richmond 172 to 121. George Williamson, Jed Bratt, and Trent Burr all won individual events for the men's team, including wins in the one and three meter dives from Sam Henninger. Unfortunately, Henninger's sweep in the dive category wasn't enough to secure a win. They fell to Fordham 161 to 129. Women's basketball kicked off a jam-packed schedule against Hartford at the beginning of January. The Explorers took an early 7-0 lead and three made free throws from Amy Jacobs helped increase that lead to 13-4. LaSalle went on a 10-0 run, jumping ahead to 23-6 at the end of the first quarter. Hartford were able to slow the Explorers' offense down a little, but it didn't stop them from finishing the first half up 34-14. The third quarter was much of the same, with the blue and gold knocking down 10 of 19 shots from the field and finishing the third frame up by a comfortable score of 62 to 26. And just because they could, the Explorers would score 15 more points in the final corner, drubbing Hartford 77 to 30. Rhode Island was next, where this time LaSalle found themselves down early on in the game. Although they trailed by five, Molly Massantonio helped tie things up 7-7, seven to seven, and the Claire Jacobs three helped cut the deficit further with a three-pointer. Despite their efforts, the blue and gold found themselves down 19-12 to 12 at the end of the first quarter. The second quarter was much of the same, with the Rams taking an 11-point lead at one point. Despite efforts from Charity Shears on offense, LaSalle would remain trailing 36-24 to 24 at halftime. The third quarter saw a 7-0 run led by Shears, but the Rams were able to answer with as many as 12 points to take a 54-48 lead going into the final frame. The Explorers did their best on defense, and three made free throws from Claire Jacobs added some offense in the mix, but LaSalle walked away with a disappointing 70-59 loss. Men's basketball hosted Rhode Island in their first A-10 opener of the season over break. The Explorers were trailing the Rams in the first nine minutes of the half, 23 to 12, but they soon began to pick up momentum. Khalil Brantley led the team with 12 of the po points in the first half. The Explorers finished the half 36 to 21. 
Deshaun Shepard made the layup in the paint, increasing the Explorers' lead to 46-37 to with 14-26 remaining. The Rams came to play, however, and took back the lead with 6.20 left on the clock. The Explorers managed to tie it up 71-71 to at 3.7 seconds left, thanks to the help of Jameer Brickus, who made three clutch free throws. The game went into overtime, where Brickus made a layup to give the Explorers the lead. Hassan Jameen closed out the game by forcing a turnover and making a free throw to seal the deal with the Explorers winning 77-75. to They then went on to face UMass. The Explorers came up short in the first half, trailing the Minutemen 44-38. to Jameer Brickus exploded in the second half, scoring 22 of his record 25 points. Thanks to Brickus, the Explorers took the lead 77-67, to outscoring them 21-14 to in the next nine minutes. The Minutemen managed to catch up, cutting the Explorers' lead to one in the last 46 seconds, but still came up short with the Explorers pulling out another win at 78-77. to Unfortunately, the Explorers weren't so lucky in the final game of their A-10 trifecta against Fordham. The Explorers started off strong with a 16-9 lead, thanks to Mamadou Ducor at scoring eight points and having four rebounds. But the Rams came back fighting, leading the half 38-30. The Explorers came back swinging in the beginning of the second half with a 7-2 run, thanks to Brickus and Brantley. They grabbed the lead 58-55 with 6.46 left in the game. Fusi Drame tied the game at 64 with 14 seconds left, but unfortunately it was not enough and the Explorers came up short, ending the game 66-64. Women's basketball showed out against George Mason, where three-pointers from Claire Jacobs, Kayla Sproul, and Molly Massantonio put LaSalle ahead 9-2 early in the game. The Patriots would go on a 6-1 run to narrow their deficit, but the Explorers had a run of their own to finish the quarter 20-13. Buckets were traded in the second quarter, but George Mason slightly edged out the Explorers at halftime, holding a 31-30 lead. The third quarter saw a 9-0 LaSalle run, and the Explorers would end the quarter up 52-36. The Patriots would spend the final quarter quarter trying to pull back the lead, but LaSalle got the win with a score of 69-62. to It was then time to face a different George, this opponent being George Washington. The Explorers started the first quarter with a 10-5 lead, but the Colonials went on an 8-0 run to take a 13-10 lead. That lead would expand to 18-12 at the end of the first frame, but the Explorers would have the 38-30 advantage at halftime. Both sides would chip away at each other in the third quarter, but the Explorers held on to a 55-50 44 lead going into the final frame. LaSalle would build a hefty 67 to 50 lead, but George Washington weren't giving up. They were able to gain some points back, but the Explorers would be victorious with a score of 74 to 65. This would be the motivation the Explorers needed as they headed into an Atlantic 10 and Big 5 rivalry match against St. Joe's. The Hawks flew out to an early seven point lead, but threes from Molly Massantonio, Kayla Spurl, and Charity Shears were able to tie things up 9 9. St. Joe's would pull ahead at the end of the first quarter, however, leading LaSalle by six points. Claire and Mia Jacobs made an effort to put the Explorers in front, but it would be the Hawks that would lead 34 to 28 at halftime. Five points from Mia Jacobs would put the Explorers within a point of their opponents, and Fiona Connolly was able to keep the scoreline close. Claire Jacobs made the difference in the third, putting LaSalle in the lead 49 to 46 going into the final quarter. It was a battle in the final minutes of the game, but the Explorers were able to come out on top 61 to 58. Men's basketball took on St. Joe's at home last week. A 12-0 lead taken by the Hawks in the first few minutes got the Explorers off to a rough start. They cut the lead to seven, nearing the end of the first half. Out of the locker room, the Hawks made another charge, taking the lead 53-39, to a career-high 24 points for Fusani Drami. Didn't give the Explorers enough to pull out a win, and they fell 71-59. to Next on the schedule, the men faced Fordham at home. They jumped to a 16-9 lead early, but a 17-1 run from the Rams quickly stopped their pace. They battled all the way back to the lead, 58-55, to with just under seven minutes left in the game. Both teams went back and forth, leading to a tie game with 14 seconds left as the buzzer sounded. The Rams took a jumper that found the net, that found the net and the Explorers took a devastating 66-64 loss. Looking for a win, LaSalle took on Davidson in another home game Tuesday. The contest started competitive through the first half with Deshaun Shepard and Fusini Jami leading the charge. LaSalle went into halftime up by one. 
A back and forth battle led to two critical free throws by Hassan Dramin to give the Explorers another one point with 13 minutes remaining. The remaining time saw the Wildcats score LaSalle 22 to 14. The Explorers couldn't find a way to close the deficit and they fell 64 to 57. They are 8 and 12 overall and 2 and 5 in an A10 conference play. One more women's basketball recap for you. The Explorers took on Loyola Chicago on Sunday, where the Ramblers jumped out to a 7-0 lead in the opening minutes. Kayla Sproul, Claire Jacobs, and Charity Shears all sunk threes to put the Explorers level at 9-9. Claire and Mia Jacobs both were in form to tie things up 13-13, ultimately ending the first quarter 15-13. Both teams traded buckets in the second quarter, and points from Charity Shears and Kayla Sproul put LaSalle up by just two points going into halftime. LaSalle had the, held the Ramblers scoreless for most of the third quarter with an 11-0 run. However, foul trouble allowed for Loyola to, go, to encroach on the Blue and Gold's lead. It wasn't too much trouble, as LaSalle stayed in front at the end of the third, leading 52-37. The Explorers extended their lead even further in the final corner, quarter, and despite some scoring streaks by the Ramblers, the Explorers were able to hold on, coming away with a 67-51 victory. Hopefully that was enough recaps for you, um, but there's definitely so much to talk about and so much to cover. Starting out, uh, we want to talk about men's basketball because obviously that is the uh, big sport here at LaSalle, and they have not been doing as well as we would have liked them to. As it uh, currently stands, they are at an 8-12 and record, which is really just not where we wanted them to be at all, despite some really good individual performances. Just the, the team overall has not been where we want them to be, and it, it's just it's really disappointing to see because people are so excited to see Fran Dunphy become head coach with his record in the Big Five and especially his legacy at LaSalle. So, Megan, just what do you think is, is the reason why things haven't really changed as much as we would have liked them to? Personally, I just think that some players – hot take kind of aren't pulling their weight yeah. like I some big names I haven't seen up there on the leaderboard Josh Nickelberry mm -hmm. we have new names like Brickus I would say definitely keep my eye out uh, for Deshaun Shepard he's yeah. kind of coming in um, he was definitely pulling his weight in the last couple games against yeah. St. Louis he had double doubles 12 points 10 rebounds mm -hmm. it was just fantastic he came up again um, lead score against Davidson and I just really think he's someone we need to look out for just I don't know Sometimes people just come out and come back in, and that's what we got to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Inconsistency definitely seems to be a theme within the men's team. And when the season first started, Josh Nickelberry was a name we were saying a lot. It was very exciting because he was definitely slated to be the star when he first joined LaSalle last season. And it finally seemed like he was coming into his own because he did struggle a bit last season. And he's up, up in the leaderboard in points. Overall, he has 197 points, which is good. Um, Khalil Brantley is also someone who we expected to be a big star. He didn't get as many minutes under Ashley Howard because he was still a freshman. He went to the transfer portal, so we weren't even sure if we were going to see him this season. But he's really been coming into his own as well. But just the fact that... We see different names in different games. You know, guys don't always show up, especially in big games against St. Joe's, Davidson. The fact that, yes, the Davidson game was disappointing, but the fact that we didn't lose by as much as we might have thought, that, that's obviously not the standard that we want to go into here with basketball. So it's just, you know, men's basketball. There was hope for a little bit, but now it's, it's not, looking, not looking as hopeful. Yeah, for me it's kind of confusing because – we look at these players individually, we look, we look at their career highs, we look at their career points. They mm -hmm. are making and setting career records individually, but yeah. as a team, I just feel like they're not getting there, they're not doing what we expected them to do, mm -hmm. they're falling short um, overall, they're falling short in the conference, yeah. and I just feel like together as a team they're just not pulling their weight. Yeah, but a team that is definitely not falling short is the women's basketball team. Uh, currently. They are 13-6, and six, I believe, and obviously Jacob's sister's name, so we talk about Kayla Sproul is continuing her amazing run from last season. Molly Massantonio is breaking into the team more, which is really great to see. So 
Um, I'm really, really glad that women's basketball is doing well and they are on a four game win streak as it stands right now. So it's great that we're seeing the players that we're used to seeing, but then Charity Shears is coming in here. Mia Jacobs is coming in as well. So we have the older, more senior members. We have new faces coming in. So I'm just excited to see what women's basketball continues to do in the rest of their season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you said, Kayla Spurl, she is really coming out there. Mm -hmm. um, 15 top score against 15 points against Loyola, and it was just amazing to see these women coming out here and just exploding on the court. Yeah, definitely. Women's basketball is something that you will want to keep an eye on. Track and field, what else is new? They are really doing great in this indoor season. We've had back-to-back -back gold medals from Liam Rivard and Ola B.C. Adams, so it's great to see that uh, we have athletes dominating both in track and field. Um, Mancini sisters, great in the mile. I just track and field you know the deal they're great we love them here and we're going to take a quick break but when we come back we have some hot takes for you no you definitely missed those so stay tuned hey you yeah you i'm talking to you lasalle are you bored do you not know what to watch on tv are you so deprived of human contact that you talk to your walls at night, then I have the solution for you. Hi, I'm Joan. If you felt any of those previous feelings, boy, do I have the solution for you. Come on down to LaSalle TV. We got sports line and sports talks on Thursdays. We got backstage pass on Wednesdays. We got Q&A. We got LTV news and more. LaSalle TV is great. That's why I brought my son here to tell you just how great it is. Tell him, son. I love LaSalle TV. Thanks, son. Watch LaSalle TV. Watching LaSalle TV will even repel the devil. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Watch LaSalle TV. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Welcome back. It's been a hot minute, but let's combat the frigid January temperatures and wind chill with some hot takes. So we kind of already got into it in uh, after recaps, but just to elaborate more on men's basketball, we said Fran Dunphy, we were really excited to have him here because of his legacy in the Big Five and especially with what he's done at LaSalle and how grateful he was to be back at LaSalle when he thought that he was going to take a break from coaching. But in my opinion, he has not made a difference at LaSalle. It's not even that he hasn't made the difference that we wanted from him. He just hasn't made one at all. Right now, they sit 8-12 and 12 overall. And in the previous seasons under Ashley Howard, which obviously if you've been watching sports on, you know that we kind of tore those apart as well. 2021-22 season, they finished 11-19. and 2020-2021 season, they finished 9-16. and 16. And the best one came in 2019-2020, where they finished 15 and 15. So, you know, Fran Dunphy's numbers right now are pretty on par with Ashley Howard's numbers. Those were considered un unacceptable. So I just really don't see any difference at all with Fran Dunphy. And it's really disappointing because every year we, we want to just make this men's basketball's year and it never is. So it's like, at, at what point do we just have to really start making those changes that we want to see? Yeah, I think everyone was really excited bringing Fran Dumfrey in. I think everyone was really hoping that that was going to be the turnaround, that it was going to be the thing that changed um, the LaSalle men's basketball pro program. And I just feel like we haven't been seeing it. Like you said, we're 8-12, and 12, and it's no different than the Ashley Howard record. And I think everyone had really high hopes coming into it. I think everyone had a really positive attitude, and it is just not showing up. And I know I kind of got into my hot take a little bit, too, mm -hmm. that it's not we can't only go on to the Fran Dumfrey train, but we got to yeah. talk about the players, too. Of course. Of and course. just um, Josh Nickelberry, I don't know. It's a name we hear all the time. It's a name that we've been hearing a lot 
um, over the last couple months, but lately it's just a name we haven't been hearing as much. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing more about Deshaun Shepard. We've been hearing definitely more about Jameer Brickus. He yes. is extremely pulling his weight, um, getting that nomination, that award, that recognition, um, two 25-point games. It's just absolutely phenomenal, and I just feel like there are so many great players on this team. I just want I want more from them. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we can only we can only harp on the 2013 March Madness thing for so long <laughs> before it starts getting repetitive. Because right now it's been 10 years since that <laughs> happened. So, you know, we love it. We want to remember it. But there's got to be more stuff to talk about there. So we're gonna take one last break. But when we come back, we have all of this week's upcoming games for you. Stay tuned. Sorry, nothing annoys me more than. Oh, hey LaSalle TV. Welcome to the LaSalle TV studio. Let's go take a tour. All right, so this is our main studio. This is where all the magic happens. We got all five cameras right here. We got our camera operators. Hey, can you switch to uh, camera three, please? Switch it off to camera three right now. Good. This is where uh, our talent sits for Sports Talk and Sports Line. That's our set for it. All right, so now let's go take a tour of the control room. That's where all the magic happens behind the scenes. So this right here, we have video. We have graphics right over here. This is the technical director. They control all the cameras. Right here, we have the director. Right over here, we have audio. Right over here, we have the teleprompter. All right, well, that's all for the tour of the LaSalle TV studio. Thanks for coming by. See ya. Welcome back. We've got another week of LaSalle sports coming up, so here's what you have to look forward to. Women's basketball will take on A-10 rival St. Bonaventure for their Pride Day game at Tom Gola Arena on Saturday, January 28th. Then, on Wednesday, February 1st, they will travel down to Virginia to take on VCU. Track and field will head north to New York for the Columbia Challenge, which takes place from January 27th to January 28th. Men's basketball will look to return to winning ways against Rhode Island on January 28th and again on February 1st against George Washington. Then, swimming and diving will stay close by for their outing against Villanova on Sunday, January 29th. Um, so definitely a lot of good basketball games to look forward to. Um, I'm really excited to see how the women do against St. Bonaventure, because obviously that's a conference game and those are the ones that really matter. VCU is historically a pretty tough opponent for us, but with the, the streak and the momentum that women's basketball have gained so far, I really am excited to see what they do, see how they perform, because you know that's just really how, what we've been expecting from them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see uh, men's basketball take on Rhode Island. Should be a good time, good game. Yeah, we're a basketball school, what can you <laughs> say? But that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Instagram at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions there. This week's poll is, who will you miss more, Sportsline episodes, because of their internships this semester, Siobhan or Libby? Well, Libby's already got a leg <laughs> up on me. Not that I want to miss more episodes, but still. And for our entire Sportsline team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Megan Cooney. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you at the game.